Biological Sciences Fellows, which I've really enjoyed having here at VBI because we have a lot more wet lab people, so I can pop in and borrow reagents here and there. And with what? that. <laughs> he does actually have a sign that says two minutes. Um, we have one simple question in my lab or, or one simple goal in my lab. We just want to end cancer, um, hopefully before I retire. And I do believe that my generation is, is going to accomplish this. We have tremendous progress done in this area of cancer research in the last 40 years. We have um, tremendous um, work done in the genomic area to understand how the disease happened. And my lab is interested in understanding how environmental factors influence cancer incidence. So I think everything together can really have a big impact on, on uh, cancer uh, prevention. So we, um, we focus on environmental factors. And in particular, we are particularly uh, interested in understanding how um, disruption of our normal physiology leads to um, cancer. And I'm going to push forward. Yes. And uh, in particular, we are, under, we are interested in, in understanding how circadian factors uh, influence cancer incidence. And the reason because we are interested in circadian factors is because we know that when there is a circadian disruption, there is um, a chance of developing diseases like cardiovascular diseases or cancer. And this happens because your physiology is altered and is not working in the normal 24-hour cycle. For those that do not know very much about what circadian rhythms uh, are, let me give you the 101 version, which is, um, is a model in which we have um, three main components. One is an input signal, and that could be light or a change in temperature. There is an endogenous oscillator in your brain that is the suprachiasmatic nuclei that captures those changes on the environment. And that leads to an output signal. And an output signal could be anything from waking you up in the morning, rising your cortisol levels, um, triggering melatonin release, and telling your body that you had to go to sleep. So this is a very simple mechanism in terms of concept. It's very complicated at the molecular level, of course. Uh, but but um, the idea is that if you mess up somehow any of these components, you will end up with an output pathway that is not what you want and might end up developing a disease. So um, my lab is, is a lab that focuses mainly in cell and molecular biology. And what is particularly appealing about the circadian rhythmicity system is the fact that it's driven by synthesis and degradation of macromolecules, like very many of the typical biological processes. But why is that circadian rhythms have become so important lately? Well, one of the reasons is because, oops, is because they are involved in a number of diseases and disorders. We know nowadays that they are, they are arranged by uh, shift work. Um, we know that they are uh, in, involved in alcohol consumption, in coronary heart attack, uh, metabolic diseases, mainly in depression. And from the standpoint of our research, we know that there are important endogenous factors that contribute to cancer development and progression. We know nowadays that women that work night shift have, have a higher propensity to develop breast cancer and men prostate cancer. And this is because it's a hormone-related cancer mainly, and your hormones are totally messed up if you work at night, okay? Um, this is really, really the, the person to blame on this is Edison because he invented light. And, and, and when he invented light, he really screwed our lives. So now you don't go to sleep at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. when it was dark. Now you stay working late at night, you work in your computer or you watch movies, and that causes what is called a social jet lag in your physiology, okay? So you go to sleep later, you wake up at a different time of the day, not at the sunrise, and that keeps you out of synchrony with the environment. So all this causes diseases. So it wasn't that good to invent electricity after all. So, so why is all this, um, um, how is all this driven? Well, all this is driven by molecules that they are called circadian factors, and these circadian factors are basically transcription factors, factors that control the expression of genes, turn genes on and turn genes off. They all have really cool names like period, double time, you know, clock, and everything. And they are all arranged in a number of, 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 of connections 
that actually drive the, the rhythmicity of very many genes involved in cell cycle progression and cell death processes. And we know nowadays that around 10% of all circadian control genes control cell divisions and death. Why is this important? Well, cancer has been totally defined as a disease in which you have uncontrolled cell progression. So if you have an environmental factor that tells the cell divide, because you get light every day at abnormal time, then the cell gets the signal divide, 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 and keeps dividing when it shouldn't be dividing. And that's what actually causes a hyperplastic process, for example, and then might develop cancer. So um, another way to see this is that these circadian factors control cell death processes. So one of the backup mechanisms in cells when something goes really, really wrong is that the cells are very altruist and say, well, hold on, there is something going wrong in me I better die that keep dividing and propagate the mutations, right? Well, cancer is a very smart, a smart disease and control the cell death process. So tell the cell, nah, I was joking, just keep dividing, okay? So, so that's how things work. So let me, uh, Jason, you think you can put that movie? So this is a, this is a very uh, quick way to actually graph what cancer is. So you have one cell that is abnormal because accumulates a number of mutations and divides at expenses of other cells in an organ. And then what happens is that you end up with cells that uh, accumulate, pops up, and forms a small tumor. And this tumor will keep growing, recruit blood vessels, and when it recruits blood vessels, it will bring more food, nutrients, oxygen, and that will keep this, this tumor growing to the level that you don't really need a microscope, you will see it with your naked eye. And when this happens, eventually one of these cells in the tumor will skip the tumor, will go through the blood vessel, um, migrate to some other places, and eventually leave the blood vessel, um, like for example here, causing a process called metastasis and the presence of a secondary tumor. So why is all this important? Because we ask ourselves whether there is any chance that cell proliferation and derby cancer can be a consequence of an abnormal circadian regulation. If this guy here controls cell division and cell death, maybe the imbalance of this due to an abnormal circadian regulation can end up being a cancer, can produce cancer. So the lab, um, focus in two areas. One is prevention and early detection, and the other one is um, treatment. And why is this? Because I think the best way to prevent cancer, the best way to eliminate cancer is by preventing cancer from happening on the de or, or detected at such an early stage that all what you need to do is a minimum invasive procedure to stop the disease, okay? Or control it in a chronic way. So um, one of the areas in my lab, uh, works in linking at the molecular level, level how the circadian factors and the intracellular network works, which ones are the features of this interaction, which ones are the outcome of these interactions, how this controls cell proliferation, induces and controls the immune response that we actually see diminish in cancer patients, replication and angiogenesis, all of which are important for cancers to, uh, to oh my gosh, zero minutes? Oh, okay, anyway. So the whole point of this is that we use a combined system of approaches that will end up in helping us uh, to develop better tools for screening, okay? And the, the main idea is that we, um, we wanna develop a screening tool in which we can predict in advance what kind of things can go wrong and what patient is at risk of developing a disease so we can change the circadian rhythmicity or the environmental um, situation and prevent the disease from happening. And in, in order to meet with a, dead, um, with a um, time um, deadline, uh, I'm just gonna tell you that on the treatment area, we have um, a very interesting project ongoing with um, uh, clinical physicians in which we work in treatment options in which we um, link circadian rhythms to uh, very many outcomes in treatments to find out which ones are the better, better treated strategies. So um, I'm gonna work, I'm gonna stop here for, for the purpose of time, but we do have, like Chris says, evolve or die, so we decide to evolve. 
Um, and we have incorporated a number of omics projects in, in our um, uh, more recent work to understand how this large scale analysis can help us to uh, detect the disease early on and prevent it from happening. And this is my group, and this is where we live. Thank you very much. Thank you.